Hello students, welcome to our YouTube channel Experience Tutor. Today we will discuss NCRT solution for class 11th Physics Chapter 3 Motion in a Straight Line Part 6. And this is our welcome message. Before we start with the class, we have a humble request to you for you. Please click on the subscribe button to support us and subscribe, like and share our channel. Also click on the bell notification to get an automatic update whenever a new video is uploaded. Now let us begin with the lesson. In the last class we have done question number 3.11 and this class will continue with the next question 3.12 Now let us see the problem. A ball is dropped from a height of 90 meter on a floor. At each collision with the floor, the ball loses one tenth of its speed. Plot the speed time graph of its motion between t is equal to 0 to 12 seconds. Now, so according to the question, ball is dropped from a height, height is equal to 90 meter. Initial velocity of the ball that is u is equal to 0. Acceleration that is acceleration due to gravity g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. Final velocity of the ball v is equal to question mark so not question mark we need to find out v say final velocity of the ball is v v is equal to final velocity from the second equation of motion we can write motion we can write s is equal to ut plus half at square so putting the values we get half 9.8 t square so t is equal to under root 18.38 which is equal to 4.29 second. Now, from first motion, first equation of motion,
from the first equation of motion final velocity v is equal to u plus a t so we can write 0 plus 9.8 into 4.29 which is equal to 42.04 meter per second Now, rebound velocity of the ball. U r is equal to 9 upon 10 v which is given in the question 9 upon 10 multiply by 42.04 which is equal to 37.84 meter per second now time taken to uh, time taken by the ball to reach maximum height can be obtained by v is equal to u r plus a t dash so we can write 0 at maximum height the final velocity is, will be 0 so 37.84 is the u r just now we have find out minus 9.8 because it is moving against gra gravity and t dash so t dash is equal to minus 37.84 upon minus 9.8 which is equal to 3.86 seconds total time taken by the ball so total time taken by the ball is equal to t plus t dash which is equal to 4.29 plus 3.86 which is equal to 8.15 sec as the time is ascending and uh, is ascending or or you can write uh, in this way the time of ascent is equal to the time of descent the ball takes 3.86 second to strike back on the floor for the second time the velocity with which the ball rebounds from the floor is equal to we can find this velocity the velocity The velocity with which the ball rebounds the ball 
rebounds. Rebounds from the floor. From the floor is equal to nine upon ten into thirty seven point eight four, which is equal to thirty four point zero five meter second. Total time taken by the ball. Total time taken by the ball rebounds from the floor from the floor is equal to 9 upon 10 multiply by 37.84 which is equal to 34.05 meter per second no we have done mistake here so we have we have to find out the time taken So it will be eight Total time taken by the ball rebound from the floor second time is equal to 8.15 plus 3.86 which is equal to 12.01 second. The speed time graph can be plotted as given below so so now we have plotted the graph between time and speed so the graph will be something like this now let us move to the next question the next question is 3.13 explain clearly with example the direction between the dis the distance between a magnitude of displacement sometimes called distance over an interval of time and the total length of path covered by a particle over the same interval b magnitude of average velocity over a time interval over an interval of time and the average speed over an interval uh, over the same interval average speed of a particle over a interval of time is defined as the total path length divided by the time interval so in both a and b the second qu quantity is either greater than or equal to the first when is it equality sign true for simplicity consider one dimension motion only so three point one three
the magnitude of displacement over an interval of time is the shortest between the initial and final position of a particle that it should be in a straight line which is a straight line the total path length of a particle is the actual path covered by the particle in a given interval of time for example suppose a particle is moving from a to b then it comes back to a point c then the total time taken is t as shown mm, so this is a this is b so draw a line here and this is c so the total time taken from here till c is t total distance covered ab plus bc therefore we can write that magnitude of average velocity is equal to magnitude of the dis displacement upon total time interval so in this case magnitude of displacement is so um, average velocity velocity is equal to displacement displacement upon time time interval that is displacement is ac upon time interval is t now average velocity average velocity is equal to total total path length upon t so ac upon t again average speed is equal to speed is equal to the total path is ab and ac and bc so upon the time interval is t since ab plus bc is greater than a since ab plus bc is greater than ac average speed therefore average speed is greater then average velocity so this is proved now this is the end of today's topic therefore we request you again to subscribe like and share our channel please click on the subscribe button to support us and also click on the bell notification to get a, an automatic noti notification whenever a new video is uploaded thank you for watching our video and supporting us thank you very much